Hey guys, this is Vadim with Max Tech, and I'm extremely excited because as you probably know by now, more and more leaks and rumors have been coming out pointing to Apple releasing a new, fully redesigned 24-inch iMac at Apple's April event next month. And just the other day, 9to5Mac basically confirmed it. They did some digging into the latest macOS Big Sur beta and found references to two unreleased iMac models the iMac 21-1 and 21-2. Now this is an absolutely huge deal for a couple of different reasons. First off, they also found references to the unreleased A14X chip within the latest iOS 14.5 beta, which is destined to go into the iPad Pro, which at this point, we know is 100% getting released within the next month, probably at Apple's April event, no doubt about it. And then the second reason is that last year, the identifier for one of the M1 Macs was leaked within macOS beta code. And then just a couple of weeks later, the M1 Macs were officially released at Apple's November event. So based on that, there's a very good chance that both of these leaked iMac models are coming sooner than later, probably at Apple's April event next month, which is extremely exciting because we've been waiting for them for many, many months. However, there is still one question that remains unclear. Do those two identifiers automatically mean that both the 24 inch iMac and the larger 27 to 30 inch iMac are coming next month? Well, I personally don't think so because of two main reasons, so let's get right into it. First off, there have been quite a few leaks pointing to a 23 or 24 inch iMac coming sometime around the first quarter of 2021. But all of those leaks don't mention anything about the larger iMac model. At the same time, Bloomberg reported that they're not expecting the iMacs until much later in the year, but due to the massive amount of 24 inch iMac leaks we've recently seen, it's likely that they were talking about just the larger iMac model coming later. Last year, we also got a lot of rumors of Apple working on a dedicated custom GPU, which was destined for the larger iMac coming in the second half of 2021, which makes a lot of sense since that machine needs to be very powerful. So in this case, I don't think all of that super powerful hardware is ready to launch next month. And therefore, I believe that the larger iMac should actually be launching later in the year. And then for the second reason, the 27 inch Intel iMac that we got last year, surprisingly also came with two separate identifiers. Yes, two codes for the same 27 inch iMac. So we started to do some research and we found that it's likely not due to the 10 gigabit ethernet upgrade option because the Intel Mac mini offers that as well and it only has one identifier. It's most likely not the nano texture glass since that doesn't really impact the internals at all. But then we dug into Geekbench results and found that every single Mac with the 20-2 identifier has a different motherboard than the 20-1 models. And then we also found that the 20-2 models always come with the higher end 5700 and 5700 XT GPUs. So the question is this, why would it need a different motherboard for those GPUs? Well, it turns out that the 27 inch iMac supports up to two 6K external displays, but only if you get the Radeon Pro 5700 or 5700 XT graphics. And then we dug a little deeper and found that you also need an extra Thunderbolt controller to support that much display bandwidth. And yes, an extra controller and larger GPU means that you need an entirely different motherboard. And that's where the second identifier for the same 27 inch model came from. I then researched a bit more and found that the 2017 21 and a half inch iMac actually has two identifiers as well. One for the base 1080p model and one for the 4K model. And if you look at the tech specs, you'll notice that the base iMac does not get a dedicated graphics chip. It relies on the Intel CPU's integrated graphics, and therefore, it probably has a totally different motherboard without the socket and wiring used by the dedicated GPU, hence why there is two separate identifiers for the same 21 and a half inch iMac. 
So the point that I'm trying to make is that both of those leaked iMac identifiers could actually be the same 24 inch iMac model that's coming next month. And that would make a lot of sense because the rumors are pointing to the larger iMac only coming later in the year. So here is the big question we have to answer. Why would the 24 inch iMac have two separate identifiers? Well, my money is on it actually having two separate motherboard options, just like we saw with those Intel models that we just looked at. So now the question is, what would warrant two separate motherboards on the same model? Well, I did some more digging and I came up with this. The 24 inch iMac will most likely have two Apple Silicon chip options. The M1 chip that we already have and the new M1X chip as an upgrade option, which will require a different motherboard due to the chip being physically larger. So let me explain how I got to that conclusion. Many months ago, before the M1 Max, Bloomberg reported that Apple will use a 12 core, five nanometer ARM processor in the very first Apple Silicon Mac in 2021 with eight performance cores and four efficiency cores, which is what we are calling the M1X chip. However, the first Apple Silicon Mac chip was actually the M1, an eight core chip, and it actually came in 2020, earlier than Bloomberg reported. So here is what I think happened. Apple was planning redesigned MacBooks with mini LED displays, but then they ended up getting delayed due to the pandemic so Apple just went ahead and tossed a less powerful eight core chip into the MacBook Air, the Pro and the Mac mini without making any other changes, knowing that they're gonna give that other 12 core chip to the redesigned MacBooks sometime in 2021. Now going back to Bloomberg's original report, they said that three Mac chip designs based on the five nanometer A14 chip are in development. So that's probably the eight core M1, the 12 core M1X, and one more mystery chip, which I personally believe will be called the M1Z. Now a few months later, after the launch of the M1 Max, Bloomberg gave us some more juicy details on more chips. Apparently, Apple is working on Apple Silicon chips with as many as 32 high performance cores that could appear in a Mac in late 2021, which I honestly think is the mystery M1Z chip that's destined for the larger iMac that's coming later this year. But the interesting detail I wanna focus on is the report that Apple is developing a chip with 16 high performance cores and four efficiency cores, essentially making it a 20 core chip. And what makes it very interesting is that Bloomberg noted that Apple might choose to release the 20 core chip with only eight or 12 of the high performance cores enabled, depending on how mass production goes. So that would mean that the same 20 core chip will be turned into a 12 core or 16 core chip by using a method called binning. So let me explain how that works. When chip manufacturers start mass producing brand new chip designs, there are often some flaws with the chip, with some of the cores failing to pass quality standards. So instead of tossing out the entire chip and taking a loss on it, they'll instead disable some of the cores and then advertise it as a slightly weaker chip to at least be able to make a sale on it. And guess what? Apple is already doing this with the M1 chip, which is intended to have an eight core GPU, but the base model MacBook Air only comes with seven. So Apple is already taking advantage of binning to sell the flawed chips instead of throwing them away. Now getting back to that 20 core chip that Apple is said to be developing, Bloomberg says that they could arrive as early as spring 2021, which would be perfect to reveal at Apple's April event. And since this 20 core chip is gonna be very ambitious, they can take advantage of binning to make sure that every single chip that they create can be sold. And the only way to do that is to disable at least four of those high performance cores on every single chip to make sure they can use all of them. And in the worst case scenario, 
they can disable eight of those high performance cores, making it a 12 core chip in total, and it would be perfect to name it the 12 core M1X chip. Now, if you're starting to lose me here, let's take those chips and apply them to the Mac lineup where it's gonna make a whole lot more sense. Let's say that the 24 inch iMac comes out next month at Apple's April event, where they also announce the M1X chip. If they decide to keep the very cheap $1,100 base model for the 24 inch iMac, then it will almost surely come with the same eight core M1 chip that we already have. But then you'll also have the option of upgrading to either a 12 core M1X chip or even a 16 core M1X chip. That sounds like a pretty decent amount of upgrade options to me for a 24 inch iMac and it would make sense why it would need to have two separate identifiers, since the M1X chip might actually require a different motherboard due to the larger size of the chip itself. Now on top of that, keep in mind that the M1X chip will also have varying amounts of GPU cores as well. Bloomberg reported that Apple is currently testing models with 16 and 32 GPU cores. So what if the 12 core M1X chip comes with 16 graphics cores, and the 16 core M1X chip comes with 32. Now that honestly sounds a bit too good to be true, so maybe Apple is gonna utilize GPU bidding to bring it down to maybe 24 or 28 cores to be a bit more realistic. And then later this year, potentially as late as December, Apple could come out with a higher end iMac that comes with the 12 core M1X at the base price, which you could then upgrade to the 16 core M1X or ultimately the 32 core M1Z model that Bloomberg reported that Apple was working on. And then on top of that, I expect the larger iMac model to also have an option for a custom dedicated Apple GPU, which we've been seeing leaks of for some time now, making it the ultimate iMac. And because of that, I think Apple is gonna be taking advantage of the iMac Pro branding for that larger iMac, since I also think it's gonna be getting a mini LED display like Ming-Chi Kuo reported on a while back. So you'll basically just have one model of the iMac, the 24 inch, coming at the April event next month. And then you're gonna get a larger 27 to 30 inch iMac Pro coming at the end of the year. Now, of course, all of this is pure speculation. So if you disagree with me, go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below. But if you think that all of this matches up with the speculation and all the leaks, go ahead and click the circle about to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.